everyone, welcome to the show. So that didn't take long, did it? <laughs> the, the day after I shared news with all of you about George Santos, treasurer, taking a plea deal, he was hit with a superseding indictment. The Republican congressman was already facing 13 counts. He's now been hit with 10 additional charges, and they're related to two new schemes that they've uncovered. The prosecutors are calling them the party program scheme and then the credit card fraud scheme. So the party program scheme is what I referred to the other day. It's in regard to donations that he claims to have taken in that were not real. Uh, the first, of course, is that fake $500,000 donation that Santos claims he loaned his campaign. If you watched my previous video, you guys know Santos campaign treasurer Nancy Marks has now admitted in a plea deal that Santos never made that loan to his campaign. She knew he didn't have the money. She knew it was fake. He was trying, though, to qualify for a Republican program that requires candidates to show at least $250,000 in donations coming in within one quarter. If the candidate can show the requisite donations within that three-month period, they qualify to receive assistance from the Republican Party. So... In addition to Mark, Santos is now being charged for that crime, for falsifying campaign finance reports. And the funny thing is, that fake loan didn't even help him to qualify for the Republican program because they came back to him and said, oh, it can't come from the candidate. It has to come from donations. It can't be like a candidate loan. So that's when Santos and Marx devised a different scheme they came up with you know they altered their plan a little bit and then he and mark started logging fake donations into his campaign finance report most of the phony donations that they showed were listed at fifty eight hundred dollars that is the maximum allowable contribution for a husband and wife so that's that crime the the first crime and then the other crime that they've now uncovered and why he's been indicted involves Santos' unauthorized use of donors' credit cards. According to the superseding indictment, Santos repeatedly charged donations to these people's credit cards without their authorization. These were people who had donated to his campaign, gave him their credit card information, and then he used it without their prior authorization, without their knowledge. He then transferred the money to his own campaign, also his personal bank account, also to the campaigns of other candidates, which is a way to curry favor with other people in the party. You give them some of your money. And to avoid exceeding campaign contribution limits for these people who had already donated, Santos attributed these illegitimate credit card donations to other people. They used the names of relatives, also associates. In one instance, the prosecutor says that Santos attempted to charge at least $44,800 to one of his donors' credit cards. Again, without their knowing, he charged $12,000 at one time and then transferred that money or the majority of it, they said, to his personal bank account. Can you imagine being so wealthy that you don't even notice that someone charges $12,000 to your card or that were almost $45,000 in total of fake charges on your credit card? And you're like, oh uh, yeah, I must've spent something somewhere. I, I have no idea. <laughs> So Santos is scheduled to go before the judge for a status conference on October 27th. He is now charged, as I said, with a total of 23 counts, and they include one count of conspiracy to commit offenses against the United States, nine counts of wire fraud, two counts of false statements to Federal Election Commission, two counts of falsification of records submitted to the FEC, two counts of aggravated identity theft, one count of access device fraud, three counts of money laundering, one count of theft of government funds, and two counts of false statements to the U.S. House of Representatives. 
If he's convicted, he faces up to 20 years in prison. I have a feeling Santos wouldn't be all that upset about it. I, I think he probably looks at it like Grinder without the app. <laughs> but, um, anyway, he still maintains his innocence, but deep down, he has to know that he is in trouble because according to the watchdog group, it's called Citizens for Responsibility and Ethics in Washington, Santos is the one and only member of Congress who still hasn't filed their financial disclosures. They were due in May and Santos never requested an extension. So he is wildly out of bounds with that. And when the Associated Press asked him about it, he said he would, quote, rather be late, accurate and pay the fine than be on time, inaccurate and suffer the consequences of a rush job. <laughs> this is Santos. Yeah, because that's what he's so known for, right, is campaign finance accuracy. <laughs> um, and speaking of which, the Daily Beast published a really interesting article. This came out just hours before this, this news broke about these new charges. According to a source who spoke with the outlet, the initial $500,000 was fake. But then in September and October of last year, Santos allegedly made good on that so-called loan. He actually deposited $615,000 into his campaign coffers. He made these the deposit in four installments, and we still don't know where did it come from. You know, they referred to it almost like an IOU to his campaign. But the question remains, where is he getting this money? Because we know he's not wealthy, as he claimed. That has been, you know, reviewed, investigated, found to be completely false. So where did it come from? So I wouldn't be surprised if we see a second superseding indictment coming down the road um, or maybe even a completely different case, uh, new charges being filed along with charges against straw donors, because that is really the only place this could come from. It, it, it has to be coming from people who are, I'm, I'm assuming, I shouldn't say it has to, but it seems like the logical answer is that it's coming from people who want to give him more money than is what, what is legally allowed for some reason, and he is funneling it through his seemingly fake business, Devolder Inc. or whatever it's called, Devolder LLC, and claiming that it's his money, which, by the way, it wouldn't even be allowed anyway. The money has to come from your personal funds. So even if people were legitimately paying him for work he had done for them, he still can't use corporate money. So we'll see. I will definitely keep you all in the loop, but yeah, it's not looking good for Georgie boy. All right. I will talk with you soon. Take care. Please like, please share, please subscribe. And if you can become a donor, I really appreciate it. Helps to keep the show going. Love you all. Take care and talk with you soon.